Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and I hope that those of you who are not from Scotland don't have too much trouble understanding what I'm saying. I've had a bunch of questions recently about my drums, about my recording setup and how I go about recording drums, so I thought I would do a wee walkthrough of my setup, my microphones and what I'm using to record drums. I love recording drums in this room because of the wooden floors which make the drums sound really lively and it's also really cool to be able to chuck up lots of room mics which make a huge difference when mixing. Starting with the drums, this is a Sonar SQ1 kit in cherry red and the sizes are 20 by 16 kick drum, 12 by 8 rack tom, 14 by 12 floor tom and a 16 by 14 floor tom. All birch shells, which means it's nice and bright and punchy and it's really great for recording. Snare is a DW 14 by 6.5 black nickel over brass, which is DW's own take on the Ludwig Black Beauty. Got a G14 head on the top, which is a really thick single ply head, a wee strip of tape to cam it down. And on the bottom head, I've got an orchestral rezzo, which I think sounds a wee bit crisper and sounds a little bit more detailed when it's mic'd up. Symbol wise, I use a mixture of stuff from Meinl and Istanbul. The hi hats I'm using here are actually two 16 inch crashes. The top symbol is an Istanbul Mehmet 16 inch traditional crash, and the underside is a Stag DH crash. Individually, these cymbals are quite bright and clangy, so I rarely ever use them as crashes, but I use them all the time together as hi-hats. Continuing on the theme of ignoring the labels that are on cymbals, this is a 20-inch Agop traditional ride, but I think it sounds absolutely brilliant as a crash cymbal. I do tend to prefer bigger cymbals, and this over here is a Meinl Byzance vintage crash. It's hand-hammered and sandblasted, so it's really trashy and aggressive, and it sounds great, very explosive. This here is probably my favourite symbol. This is a 22 inch Istanbul Agop Aaron Sterling signature crash ride and it is amazing. It's got a really nice sticking definition but it's also great for laying into for those big choruses and it sounds fantastic. I love it so much and I would be genuinely heartbroken if I ever cracked it. I do change out cymbals quite often, but I nearly always have this one on my setup because it's just a really, really nice cymbal and it works well for so many styles. On to mics now. This here is a Bayer Dynamic M201. I just got this quite recently, but it's working wonders. I used to always find when I was using like a, an SM57 or an Audix i5 that I got quite bad hi-hat bleed. I do play my hi-hats quite close to my snare drum, but this has made a huge difference because it's got much better rejection from the side and there's not as much of that horrible hi-hat harshness in the snare mic that you can get sometimes. On the snare bottom, this is a T-Bone EM700 condenser. This is actually the first microphone I ever got about 10 years ago. It's very, very cheap, but it's very, very good for bottom snare. It gets a lot of the detail, and when combined with this orchestral head that I spoke about, it really picks out some of the finer details. On my hi-hats, I've got a Neumann KM184, fairly bog standard, but it sounds really nice. On the toms, I've got Sennheiser MD421s. Again, very standard choice, but I can't knock them. In the middle here, just above the kick drum, I have my Shure SM7B. This is just to get a general mono picture of the kit from the centre. Sometimes, if I want a bit more definition from the snare drum, I'll point this microphone towards the side of the shell. It gives the snare a bit more body, but for this, I just want a really generalised picture, so it's just pointing straight ahead towards me. On the overheads, I've got a pair of Neumann KM184s positioned a wee bit closer to the kit than I usually have them. Normally, I have them a bit head height, but because I've got room microphones which are going to pick up the overall sound of the kit, I'm mainly using these for cymbals. I use three microphones on the kick drum, which gives me loads of options when I'm mixing. I can blend any combination of the three to get the sound that I'm after. Inside the drum on the pillow, I've got a Shure Beta 91, which is picking up most of the attack and the click from the beater. In the port, I've got an Electro Voice RE20, which is pointing kind of between the beater and the shell. I find pointing it towards the shell a bit more gives you a little bit of the tone of the drum, which is quite nice. And finally, on the outside, on the front head, I've got a Sontronics DM1B, which is capturing some of the subbiness and a bit more roundness and body from the drum. 
This is a totally untreated room, so it isn't absolutely perfect, but I've found that the best spot to have the drums is in front of the curtains here. It means they act like a little bit of a drum booth, absorb some of the reflections, and it also means that I can get a good amount of distance between the drum kit and the room mics. My main stereo room mics are a pair of AEA R84 ribbon microphones. I first came across these recording with my pal Gus Sturrett in Glasgow a couple of years back and wanted a pair ever since. They're absolutely fantastic for drum room mics and usually when I hang around with Gus I come away wanting to buy lots of expensive mics so thanks man. In the centre here is a Warm Audio U87 copy, positioned a wee bit higher up to capture some more of the higher frequencies. Because the ribbon mics have a roll off about 15 kilohertz, if I want to brighten up the overall room sound then I'll use this centre microphone. I've got a pair of SM57s pointing away from the kit. This is my first time trying this but it's actually a really cool wee trick. I stuck them behind these baffles so they're capturing the reflections from the room and none of the direct sound from the kit which gives them a totally different character compared to the room mics which are capturing more of a direct sound. And finally, this here is an RB500 ribbon microphone, which is about 5 feet in front of the kick drum, which I'm using to try and capture an overall picture of the front of the kit, but with a more direct sound. Because ribbon microphones capture sound from both sides, this baffle helps the microphone to see more of the kit and less of the room. And I find that placing it a wee bit lower down helps to get some of the energy off the front of the kick drum. So I hope that's satisfied all you gear nerds out there and uh, any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to try and answer them and make sure you go over to my recording studio page as well, which is at Brookwood Recording, where I'll hopefully be posting more about recording drums soon. Cheers! <laughs>